3.5, conditional probability and independent events. Conditional probability of event E given event F is written like this. So this word given is going to be this symbol right there, E given F. And you've got an equation for that. Probability of E given F equals the probability of E and F, or that means both, over the probability of F. So kind of kind of look for the pattern there. This second one is the one that's on the bottom. That's kind of what's important to notice. Example one is a simple example of the formula. Probability of E is 0.4, probability of F is 0.5, probability E and F is 0.2, probability, uh, find probability of E given F. So I would just kind of write down the formula again. E given F equals E and F over the second one. Okay. So there's some information that I don't really need. I don't really need this, but uh, E given F is 0.2. Probability of F is 0.5. And so we can divide that or just, uh, you know, multiply by 10. You can see the fraction is going to be two fifths. Example two, they changed the letters, but it's still the same thing. Um, the formula for A and B, probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B over probability of the second one. This time it's a little bit different because they give me different information. They're giving me probability of A given B is 0.5. And probability of B is 0.7, but we're missing we're missing this information. This is what we want. So if you wanted to rewrite, basically it looks like that. So we can cross multiply. X is going to equal 0.5 times 0.7. which is 0 0.35, 0 0.35. So probability of A and B is 0.35. All I'm doing is using that formula there. Skipped example three, going straight to example four. At a local college, four fifths of students live in a dorm. Of those who live in a dorm, one fourth have a car. Find the probability that a student lives in a dorm and has a car. All right, so a couple of things. It says, um, I, I would probably rewrite and take it out of a story problem and write it more like what the, the equation looks like. So probability that a student lives in a dorm is four-fifths. Now, the second sentence is, is the tricky one, I think. Of those who live in a dorm, one fourth have a car. What you need to think about is the word given. All right, given implies that one of those things happens first. And so you think about what, what comes first in that sentence, ha living in a dorm or having a car. And, um, you know, I think living in a dorm happens first. So that's that's the given part. The given part is the part that happens first. So the way I can read this is the probability of having a car given that they live in a dorm is one fourth. And then the question part says, find the probability that a student lives in a dorm and has a car. All right. So I'm going to call that probability of uh, C and D. Okay. D and C, either way, it doesn't really matter. It's the same thing dorm and car, car and dorm, same thing. Uh, and that's what we're trying to find. So you've got the exact same pieces of information that we need for that formula. Probability of C given D equals probability of C and D over the probability of the second one, like that. So this is like the last one. We've got this number over here is one fourth, and we've got this number down here is four fifths. And we're trying to find the ant. We're trying to find both. So we can we can kind of go over here and say one fourth. Feel free to change them into decimals if you want. 
And so, I don't know, people struggle with this, but really it's just, you can set it up like a proportion and cross multiply. X is going to equal one fourth times four fifths. It's probably easier to not change it into decimals. Those fourths cancel, I'm left with one fifth. So there's your probability. The probability of um, living in a dorm and has a car is one fifth. Number five, a class contains 40% women and 60% men. There's a 25% chance of selecting a business major given a woman is chosen. Okay, so that's kind of an important word. Find the probability that a student chosen from the class at random is a female business major. All right, so let's go back and look at what they have. 40% women, so probability of... Um, they use woman here and they use female here. So pick one, either W or F. Uh, I, I'm going to pick F for female. Probability of female is 0.4. And probability of male is 0.6. 25% chance of selecting a business major given a woman is chosen. All right. So that use that use that word given and use the context of the sentence to figure out which one happens first. Which one happens first, business major or woman? Okay, and, uh, and so, you know, this is what happens first. That's the given part. So probability that it's a business major given that it's female is 0.25. That's tough. And so find the probability that the student chosen from the class at random is a female business major. You could put the word and right here, female and business major. That's what we're trying to find. And again, if you if you switch those two around, it doesn't matter. But you can't switch the given around. The given, the, the female happens first. So that has to be in that second position. But uh, that's what we're trying to find here is the and. And so again, it's just the same. It's the same equation. Probability of B given F equals the probability of B and F over the probability of the second one. So B given F, 0.25. Probability of F is 0.4. And we're trying to find the probability of B and F. 0.25 equals X times 0.4. You're gonna end up cross multiplying that. You don't really need to think of it as a proportion, but that's, you know, people, Maybe if that makes you feel comfortable, I guess. 0.25 times 0.4 is 0.1. So there's your probability of B and F. Probability of a female business major is 0.1. Six, numbers five, six, seven, eight, and nine are written on slips of paper. Two slips are drawn at random, one at a time without replacement. Find the probability that the first number is six, given that the sum is 15. Okay, so, you know, you got a piece of paper with a five on it, a piece of paper with a six on it, a piece of paper with a seven on it, and so on. That's, that's what they mean by that. Two of them are drawn at random. Find the probability that the first number is six, given that the sum is 15. So we're trying to find probability that the first one is a six, given that the sum is 15. So we can use our formula, probability that the first is six and the sum is 15 over probability that the sum is 15. Now this one seems harder because they don't really give me the numbers, but, but let's look at the sample space. Let's look at everything that could be possible. You're picking out two of these slips of paper. So I'm just going to list out the sample space. Maybe you get a 5 and a 6, a 5 and a 7, a 5 and an 8, a 5 and a 9. Or you pick a 6 first and you get um, 6, 5, 6, 7, 6, 8, 6, 9. Okay, or you pick a 7 first, 7, 5, 7, 6. Notice you can't get 7, 7. 
you can't get doubles because you already picked that number out. Eight, five, eight, six, eight, seven, eight, nine, or nine, five, nine, six, nine, seven, nine, eight. Those are the only possible things that could happen. That's that's basically the sample space. I see what twenty different possibilities there. Okay, um, so look at getting uh, the the sum of fifteen. Okay, let's do that first. So sum of fifteen is like this one, this one, and uh, this one. Are there any other ways to get a sum of 15? Yeah, this one. I see four of them, four of them out of 20. So, so this probability, some probability of sum of 15 is four out of 20. Now think about it. Um, the first number is six and the sum is 15. It's this one. That, that's the only way to get a, the first number six and a sum of 15. So that's one out of 20. So if we want to find this answer, we need to divide those two fractions. One twentieth divided by four twentieths equals one fourth. And that's the answer. All right. Now, an easier way of doing this is just look at the green. The one we want is one out of the four ones that I underline. It's just it's just one out of four. So we can kind of skip over that, that first step if we want. Part B, find the probability that the first number is 5 given the sum is 13. So probability that the first one is 5 given the sum is 13. That's the probability that the first is 5 and the sum is 13 over the probability that the sum is 13. So check it out. Sum is 13. Um, there's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. So again, there's only four of them. And the first one is five. This is going to be one out of four again. All right. One out of four. It's the same. It's basically the same problem. Independent events. One event occurring doesn't affect the probability of another. If you flip a coin and the probability is, is uh, 0.5 that you get tails, you flip that coin again, okay? It doesn't matter that you got tails. Sometimes people think, well, I flipped a coin five times and it was tails every time. It's got to be heads this time. Um, but that's not how probability works. It's still, even if, you, if, even if you flipped tails 10 times in a row, the probability that that next one is tails is still going to be 0.5. The previous flips should not affect um, the next one. So that's independent. Uh, whatever already happened doesn't affect the probability of, of something in the future, okay? So events E and F are independent if and only if this, okay? So this is a good test. This equation is a good test for if they are independent. Number seven says events A and B are independent with that, that uh, find probability of A and B, and probability of A or B. Okay, so since we know that they are independent, then that means we get to use this equation. You don't get to use that equation unless they're independent. So we can find the probability of A and B pretty quickly because we know it's just going to multiply these two probabilities. Probability of A is 0.2, probability of B is 0.5, or 0.15, sorry. So if we multiply those two numbers, 0.2 times 0.15 is 0.03. Probability of A and B is 0.03. Now, we need to find the probability of the union. And this is going to be hard for some of you, but you have to remember a formula from a previous lesson. We know the union rule, and this always applies. A double is going to equal a single plus the other single minus the opposite double. And so since we just found the intersection was 0.03, then all we really need to do is say 0.2 plus 0.15 minus 0.03. So that's going to be 35 minus 3 is 32. That's 0.32.
the probability of the union is 0.32. So make sure if you've got a formula, it's going to still apply. Something from the previous section is still going to apply in this section. Number eight, probability A is 0.5. Probability of the union is 0.9. Find probability B if A and B are mutually exclusive. Okay. Well, mutually exclusive, let's draw a picture of that. When they say mutually exclusive, they mean that there's no overlap. And so your Venn diagram would look like this. And probability of A is 0.5. And it says probability of A or B is 0.9. And so you can subtract and, and figure out that that's got to be 0.4 right there right? Because A or B is 0.9. There's no overlap to worry about. So it's just, you add those things together. Um, you know, if you think about it as the union rule, 0.5 plus 0.4 minus zero overlap, there's your 0.9. And so probability of B in this case is 0.4. Now, if A and B are independent, Okay, if A and B are independent, then we've got that formula that we just talked about. Probability of A and B equals probability of A times probability of B. Now don't use don't use part A. Part that was a different that was a different thing. All right. So forget about that number from before. We we only we're starting over, basically, right? And so we know A is 0.5. Probability of A is 0.5, but we, we're, we're missing two things in our equation for this. But notice they give us this. And so usually we can use the union rule to figure something out here. All right. Um, so let's look at the union rule. Probability of the union equals probability of the single plus the probability of the double, I mean, other single minus the probability of the other double. Okay. So again, we know that probability of, of A is 0.5. We know the probability of the union is 0.9. But we seem to be missing some stuff. And so what we're going to do here, and this is kind of tricky, but we're just going to call this X. Probability of B is X. And so when I know that they're independent, I'm going to say, I'm going to plug this in right here. And we called that X, right? Probability of B was X. So I'm going to replace this with 0.5X. It's a weird thing to do, but the result is I've got an equation with only one variable I should be able to solve. So let's subtract this over and get 0.4. And let's combine our like terms. 1x minus 0.5x is 0.5x. And I can divide by 0.5. That's going to be what? Four fifths? Four fifths. Right? That's four fifths. X is four fifths. So that's that's my answer. That's, that's uh, well, no, that's, yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted probability of B. I'll let probability of B equal X. Probability of B is four fifths, or 0.8 if you want the decimal. Number nine, determinative events A and B are independent. So, you know, it's it's really the same. It's the same equation. Probability of A and B equals probability of A times probability of B. If they say the word independent, you're probably going to use that equation right there. So it says two dice are rolled. A, the first roll is a one. B, the sum of the dice is eight. Okay, so the sum of the dice is eight. Let's go back to um, here. Okay, and remember this, this picture. So the first one is a one. The first one is a one. There were six things. So the, the probability that the first one is a one is six out of 36. Now, the other one, the sum is an eight. The sum is eight is 
these one, two, three, four, five, there are five of them. So probability that the sum is eight is five out of 36. Okay, so probability of A is one sixth, probability of B is five out of 36. Right, because that was that was six out of thirty-six, so that's one sixth. And so, according to our formula, probability of A and B equals um, probability of A times probability of B so um probability of a is one sixth probability of b is five thirty six okay so we can calculate the probability of a and b but we can also just look at that chart the probability of both of those things happening both of those things happening the first one is a one and the sum is eight well, you look at it, the first one is one and the sum is eight doesn't happen. The probability of both of those things happening is gonna be zero. And so we know the probability of this is zero according to our sample space. And so we can tell, I don't need to multiply that out, we can tell that that's not true. This equation is false. And so we can answer the question, are those two independent? A and B are not independent. So then the next one, we got a box contains seven green marbles and three blue marbles. You randomly draw two marbles, one after another, without replacement. The first marble is green. The second marble is blue. Okay. So we can kind of tell what's going to happen here. We've got seven greens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we've got three blue ones, blue, blue, blue. Okay. Um, I pull out a, it says the first marble is green. So probability of A is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of 10, right? Seven out of 10. Now the probability of B So we already we already took out a marble. Right? So you you don't know you don't know which one it is. It's it's a seventy percent probability that you put, pulled out a green one, but you don't necessarily know. The probability of blue depends on what happened first, because if I pulled out a green one, the probability of blue would be three out of nine. But if I had pulled out a blue one the first time, the probability would be two out of nine. And so in this case, um, the probability of the second one depends on whatever happened the first time. This is not independent. I don't need a formula to tell me that. The second one depends on what happens first time. Last one. Bicycle factory runs two assembly lines, A and B. 95% of line A's and 88% of line B's bikes pass inspection. 30% of all bikes come from line B. Find the probability that a bike did not pass inspection and came from line B. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one like a tree diagram. So either it comes from A or from B. And so if you think about the probabilities given, it says 30% of all come from B. That must mean that 70% come from A. After we determine which line it's from, we can determine pass fail. So let's say if you're at line A, pass or not pass. Line A says 95% of them pass. That means 5% don't pass. And line B do the same thing, pass, don't pass. It says 88% of line B's bikes pass, which must mean 12% don't. So I'm going to multiply these numbers together. Okay. If I follow the top path, 
0.7 times 0.95 is 0.665. That's the probability that that path is traveled. And so then I do the second path, 0.7 times 0.05 is 0.035. Down at the bottom, 0.3 times 0.88 is 0.264. And 0.3 times 0.12 is 0.036. Now, one way to kind of check your work is if you add these numbers straight down, add those four blue numbers, they should add up to one. And that means you got all of the all of the possibilities. Okay. So find the probability the bike did not pass inspection and came from line B. All right. So let's see. What are we trying to do? We can find a couple of things. The probability that something passes by adding those two together, 0. 0.665 plus 0. 0.264 is 0. 0.929. And we can likewise find the probability that something didn't pass, probability that it doesn't pass by adding those two numbers, 0. 0.035 and 0. 0.036 is 0. 7, 1. Again, you can you can check by adding those two numbers to see that you got one. You got everything that could possibly happen. All right. So let's let's think about what we've got here. Okay. I'm gonna make a probability distribution, which means a table of all probabilities. What could happen is it could pass and be from A, or it could pass and be from B or it could not pass and be from A, or it could not pass and be from B, all right? So not passing and being from B is what we want, right? So not pass and came from line B. So really this is the one that we want. So the probability that it doesn't pass is right here, 0.071. Um, and came from B, probability that it came from B was this number over here, 0.3. So we're just going to multiply right there. All right, the probability that it didn't pass and came from B, we're going to multiply those two numbers, 0.071 times 0.3 is 0 0.0213. That's your answer. The probability that it didn't pass and came from B is 0 0.0213.